Okay, next we're going to take a look at our bikini bottom genetics. Scientists at Bikini Bottom have been investigating the genetic makeup of the organisms in this community. Use the information provided and your knowledge of genetics to answer each question. Number one, for each genotype below, indicate whether it is heterozygous or homozygous. And if it's heterozygous, we're going to write H-E. If it's homozygous, we're going to write H-O. But remember, hetero means different, so that means we're going to have different alleles. It's going to have a dominant allele and a recessive allele for whatever the trait might be. Homozygous. Homo means the same. Zygos means zygotes. So zygote is homo, the same. It's going to have either two dominant alleles, big letter, big letter, or two recessive alleles, little letter, little letter. Okay. So heterozygous would be big letter, little letter. Homozygous dominant would be big letter, big letter. Homozygous recessive would be little letter, little letter. So we have big T, big T. That would be homozygous dominant. So we put H O there. That's homozygous. Big B, little B, that's a dominant allele and a recessive allele. They are different. That's hetero. Big D, big D, homozygous, because they are the same. They're both big letters, so that would be homozygous dominant. Big F, little f, those are different. There's a dominant allele and a recessive allele. They are different, so that would be heterozygous. Little t, little t, they're the same. Homo means same, so those are homozygous. And they're both little letters, so it's homozygous recessive. That was that offspring was the recessive trait. Little d, little d, they are the same, so it's homozygous. And they're both little letters, so it would show the recessive trait. Homozygous recessive. Big D, little d, different, so it would be heterozygous. And any time you have the heterozygous condition, do the law of dominance, the dominant trait will show up. Any time you have that big letter, that dominant trait is what's going to show up. I'll leave you to finish the rest of those. Um, this is which of the genotype in number one would be considered purebred? Okay, purebred is going to be the same thing as homozygous. So any of them that are homozygous would be purebred. So the big T, big T there would be purebred. Um, the big D, big D there would be purebred. The little T, little T, oops, little T, little T would be purebred recessive. The little D, little D is also purebred recessive. And the little F, little F is purebred recessive. The little b, little b is purebred recessive. The big b, big b is purebred dominant. And the big f, big f would be purebred dominant. And then it says, which of the genotypes number one would be hybrids? Well, hybrids are heterozygous. It's a hybrid, a mix between two different alleles. So for the hybrids, we would have this big b, little b here would be hybrid. The big F, little F, would be hybrid. The big D, little D, would be hybrid. Big T, little T, would be hybrid. And that's it for the hybrids, I do believe, unless I missed something. Okay, so then... Number two says determine the phenotype for each genotype using the information provided about SpongeBob. And remember, pheno, so that uh, physical. So phenotype is going to be the physical characteristics brought on by the genotype, which refers to the genes, so the alleles for those genes. So genotype would be the letters that we talk about, the big letter, little letter, big letter, big letter. 
That's the genotype because it's talking about the gene makeup. Phenotype is the physical appearance that results from the genotype. Step number two says yellow body color is dominant to blue. Okay, so yellow is dominant. So anytime there's a yellow, we're using Y. It's this time, anytime there's a yellow big Y, anytime a big Y shows up, that's the dominant trait. The big Y is going to shade out that little Y. Okay, so it's going to cover it up because of the law of dominance. The law of dominance says anytime you have an allele for a dominant trait, that dominant trait is going to show. Okay, big Y, big Y. And that's two alleles for that dominant trait, so it's definitely going to be a yellow. Okay. Big Y, little Y well, has a dominant allele and a recessive allele. This heterozygous has a dominant and recessive. That dominant trait will still show. It's be yellow. Okay. And homozygous recessive. Two little letters is the only time we're talking about a case of dominant recessive traits. Uh, when it's little y, little y, when it's homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive is the only time you'll see that recessive trait. In this case, the recessive trait is blue. So little y, little y would be blue. Okay. So that's that so far. And then it says square shape is dominant to round, and they're using S's this time, so the big S is going to represent the dominant square shape. And then little s will be recessive round. So if it's big S, big S, it's homozygous dominant, that dominant trait will show, so that would be a square shape. Big S, little s, it's heterozygous. And that means if it has a dominant allele and a recessive allele, but any time that dominant allele is there, it's going to be covering up that recessive. So it would still show the dominant trait of being square. And then little s, little s, homozygous recessive. So homozygous recessive, little letter, little letter, that is when you will see that recessive trait. So this one would be round. Okay, for number three, it says for each phenotype, give the genotypes that are possible for Patrick. Okay, so it says a tall head is dominant big T, and a short head is recessive little t. Okay, so for a tall head to show up, it could be homozygous dominant. Of course, we show that dominant trait, but it would also show up if it were heterozygous with the big T, little t, because it would still have that dominant allele, and that dominant allele will overshadow that recessive allele in the case of dominant recessive traits. A short is the recessive trait. The only way that recessive trait is going to show up is if it's homozygous recessive, little t, little t. A pink body color, big P, is dominant to yellow, represented with little p. So pink is dominant, big P. So I have a pink body. You would need at least one of those dominant alleles. So it could be homozygous, big P, big P. But also heterozygous, big P, little P would still show that dominant pink, pink color. Um, yellow is the recessive trait. So it would have to not have the dominant allele. It would have to be homozygous, recessive, little P, little P for that yellow trait to show up. Give me a second to get all that. The number four says SpongeBob SquarePants recently met Sponge Susie Round Pants at a dance. SpongeBob is heterozygous for his square shape. So that's important to know right there. Let's highlight that. And so he is. SpongeBob is heterozygous. Okay, so he is heterozygous for his square shape. He's showing the dominant trait, but he's not purebred. He has the big, big letter, little letter. So he's heterozygous square. Okay. Sponge Susie is round. That's the recessive trait. So for her to be round, she would have to have two. Alleles for that recessive trait. 
So now we're going to create a Punnett square to show the possibilities of a result. If SpongeBob and Sponge Susie got married and had children. Um, so we're going to go back and look at question two. It says square. They're going to use the S's. So square would be either big S, big S or big S, little S. It said that SpongeBob was heterozygous. So he's going to be the big S, little S. Scenario there. So he is big S. He is big S, little s, and then it says Sponge Susie was round. Round was recessive, so she has to be homozygous. Little s, little s, for that recessive trait to show up. So she is little s, little s. Okay, so we put these together. We bring down that big s. Okay, SpongeBob's big S will come down, and Sponge Susie's little S will come over. So we have big S, little S. And here, um, SpongeBob had a little S here, and Sponge Susie had a little S. So this one will be little S, little S. Big S comes down, little S comes over. So that one's going to be big S, little S. This little S will come down. This little S will come over. So this offspring would be little S, little S. Okay. Then it says list the possible genotypes and phenotypes for their children. So we get right here. We have big S, little S, big S, little S. Those two are the same. Little S, little S, and little S, little S. So only two possible genotypes. And that would be the heterozygous condition of being big S, little s, and if it's heterozygous, that dominant trait is going to show. So this possible child would be square shaped, would have a genotype of being big s, little s, and then a phenotype, physical appearance, of being square. And then we have these over here on this side that are both little s, little s, so that other genotype possibility would be little s, little s, homozygous recessive, and that's the only condition that will show that recessive trait of being round. So those children would have the trait, the physical trait, phenotype of being round. Okay, B says, what are the chances of a child with a square shape? So the square shape over here we had two out of our four possibilities being square shaped. Maybe that big S little S genotype. So that was two out of four. Or it could be reduced to one out of two, one half, or fifty percent would be square. Chances of it being a round shape, same. This side, both of those, two out of four, have the homozygous recessive genotype. So then we show the recessive phenotype of being round. And that's two out of four. It may say reduce. If you don't see a two out of four, if you see a one out of two, that would be the same thing. If we just reduce it down, two out of four or one out of two. And it's still 50%. We've had that recessive trait of being round. So that gives you an idea of how to do those. Um, I'm going to leave that for you to go ahead and try the rest of those. That should get you started. So try those and remember uh, when you finish to attach and submit.